All right, everybody, we're going to get started um, just in a couple of minutes. So go ahead and, and um, find a comfortable place where, where you can uh, sit back and relax, have your paper and markers handy. And, um, and like I said, we'll get started in a few minutes. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're very excited um, about, about this event today. So we'll begin in a couple minutes. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Envoy's Artful Hour. Um, we're joined by Dr. Sue Boardman. I'm so excited um, to have her um, lead us through an, a, a pretty incredible exercise today. My name is Kari Ramirez, and I'm a co-founder of Envoy's for Humanity. And welcome, welcome. We're so excited that you're here today. Thank you for taking out um, some time on your Sunday um, to still do some activism work, but we're going to um, package it in a way that we are um, taking some time for ourselves and being Hello, intentional. Um, and oops, on hold, voice, Mark hold on a second. Um, we're joined by Dr. Yeah. So Can you guys hear that? Um, yeah, it just it must be the lag okay. from the restream. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, so we're going to package it kind of in a way of being intentional with your activism. It, it helps um, center us and calm us. And, and we know that we all need to take um, breaks for ourselves um, in this work because it is um, demanding and overwhelming and um, joyous and heartbreaking all at the same time. So, so if you would like to join on some of our postcarding projects that we're doing right now, um, we have a postcarding campaign and we also have a letter writing campaign. Um, you can find all of that information in on our website at envoysforhumanity.org slash postcarding. Um, currently, um, one of the most important um, bills is up for let passing, um, being passed in the Senate um, for the People Act and it's voting rights reform and it is necessary and it has to be done. Um, we have, as Democrats, have the House, the President's, uh, presidential office and the Senate. So there is no reason that we cannot get this done. Um, so we are writing postcards to um, our pivotal Democrats that still haven't come out about a, amending or 
busting the filibuster and we're urging them um, to do the right thing and get this legislation passed. It has to be done. We have the numbers, we have the majority and there's no reason why we can't get it done. Um, and so we're writing postcards to urge our senators. If your senators already support um, passing this and amending the filibuster, we're sending them a thank you to let them know that we have their backs, which is just as important as pointing out when they're not doing the right thing. Um, and then we're also writing, we're helping um, to free Nathaniel Pierce. Um, he was put in prison for um, over 20 years for a crime he didn't commit. And um, unfortunately he has been back in jail on a parole violation for the crime that he never committed. So um, we need justice, criminal justice reform um, very badly. And so we are working to write to the Virginia parole board um, to help get him released um, back to his loving family so he can um, continue living his life um, instead of being locked up. And so those both are on envoysforhumanity.org slash postcarding. Um, you can do those on your own time, very simple things to do to, to make a difference and make change. Um, we also uh, have a bunch of great events coming up with one of our wonderful um, partner organizations, uh, Coalition for Co Women, Women of Color Coalition, I apologize. Um, and you can also find that on the same website. So envoysforhumanity.org and check out some of the great um, events that we're, we're helping um, to collaborate with. And so working together, working together, different organizations, different volunteers from organizations, bringing everyone together. That's how we're gonna make um, this positive change that we wanna see in this country and, and around the world. So, so thank you guys again for joining us. I'm gonna pass it on to um, my partner, Scott Bramer, also co-founder of Envoys for Humanity. And he is gonna kick us off on today's event. So again, thank you for being here. Thanks, Kari, that was great. Um, we're so excited that you all are spending some of your precious time with us on this Sunday afternoon. Um, and um, this event is um, something near and dear to, um, to our hearts because um, it is so um, uh, integral to the, the, how we founded Envoys, which is to bring some joy and some, some uplifting energy into um, the volunteer process so that folks will, um, you know, keep doing it and uh, feel great about it. And so um, we know that we all feel good when we, when we do these, these little actions that, that all add up and make a big difference in the long run. But um, it is that long run that, that is critical. Um, so <clears throat> that is really a big part of what Envoys is about, creating that kind of volunteer community, that supportive community where people can meet like-minded uh, souls out there in the, in the world of activism and uh, get that, that, that social interaction, that, that social support. And, and also um, just our job um, as, as, as an organization is just to bring um, ideas and fresh approaches um, to the table so that this process will just be more consistently uplifting and inspiring. So on that note, we're so lucky to have teamed up with Dr. <clears throat> Boardman, Sue. Sue is with us from Georgia, the epicenter of our um, political universe these days. Um, and that synchronicity is um, not lost on anybody here, I don't think, but um, uh, the, the um, fact of the matter is, is uh, as far as uh, kind of syncing with, with what we have done. We just met Sue a, a few weeks ago and um, her, um, she, or what she's gonna lead us through today, as I say, is very resonant with, with kind of the, the mission that, that Kari and I set up uh, going back a couple of years. And um, um, one of the things, I, I come from a, from a, a coaching background. Um, I have also been involved with recreation. If you think about the word recreation, recreation, um, which, you know, kind of revitalizing ourselves. It has everything to do with self-care. And, um, you know, um, get, I, as, a, as a, a tennis coach, primarily, um, people came to me not only looking to, um, to build technique that would be dependable, but to build a mindset that was um, going to enable them to execute under pressure and in competition. And um, so that, 
is um, one of the things that led me to be able to integrate one of my passions into, into sports. And that's a kind of a mindful approach to sports. But it turns out that you know a mindful approach um, to, to anything um, keeps us more focused um, and more in the moment, more present, more open to um, what is going on now so that we can respond to what is going on now better. And um, so I have become a, a, a kind of a, a, a moving meditation advocate. What I mean by that is, let's say you're, you're, you're playing um, baseball. Um, as I say, I teach tennis, but it's the same for, for almost any sport or any sport, literally. And um, let's say you're playing baseball and you're, you're coming up to bat and you're worried about having struck out and looked bad, you know, for your team the, the last time you were up. So your mind is thinking back or you're thinking, oh, this pitcher is the greatest, you know, and, and, and I just can't stand up to him. So you're thinking, you know, you're thinking you're projecting forward on what this pitcher might do, how, how what a wicked curveball this guy is going to have or what, what have you. So the key becomes to, 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 to become present, to get out of all of that stuff. And so sensory observation, in other words, when our mind is on what we are observing in the present tense um, with any of our five senses, um, that is like a little magic trick that gets us in the present tense and gets us into that, that kind of zone performance state of being. And uh, it turns out that's a lot of what, what meditation is, but you know, with, with, with sensory observation, even for one or two seconds, as I stand at that batter's plate and about to, that pitcher's about to throw the ball, if I'm not worrying about what happened before, what might happen next, but just simply thinking about how my bat feels in my hand, am I squeezing it too hard? And is my grip relaxed? Um, I feel my, my, my cleats in the ground, my weights on my back foot. So my mind is on what I am feeling, okay? One of my five senses. It could be on, and then I might go from, from that to here comes the pitcher and my, now, I'm, now I'm observing my eyes watching the ball in the guy's hand. So as, as we get into that more objective, observing our own sensory input type of mode, we open the door to perform better. Our senses all merge together and magically we begin to optimize our performance. So in any case, that's, that's my history personally. What I'd like to do um, to start this meeting um, is to do just a little mindful minute together where we practice just a, just a few even seconds of sensory observation and the, and the, the, the um, most popular way of, of kind of uh, meditating is to observe our breath, okay? So, you know, we, that's something that we automatically do, but we don't think about it much. So let's just sit here for a second. And before we deserve our breath, let's just observe our posture, okay? So we're thinking about our posture. We're thinking about, um, are, are we hunched over? Are we sitting up straight? Do we feel our we feel our bottom kind of, you know, equally balanced. Are we on one side or the other? Are we flat, you know, across the bottom? Okay, and now um, we are uh, sitting straight. Um, we can feel the breath come in. So as we slow down here, let's just feel the breath come in through our nose. We feel our chest and our stomach expanding and holding it, we exhale through our mouth. All right, let's try that again. Okay, we're sitting, we're feeling ourselves in our chair. We're straight up and down, but we're gonna take that breath through the nose, nice and slow and relaxed feeling our stomach expanding, our chest expanding. And now we feel it release and breathing out through our nose. Well, let's try that one more time without me saying anything.
Excellent. So we have there just a mindful moment and a list, a little spiel about that. And that has everything to do with what Sue is going to be talking about today and how we are approaching um, decorating postcards and letters. So thanks again for everybody showing up. I'm so happy to be involved with this project with, um, with Kari and with everybody else who's been with us for um, all along the way. And what is really cool is, is um, the way I see several names who are here with us today that I haven't seen before. And that's the most exciting thing is to, to meet new folks and, uh, and to keep um, you know, growing our, our network and, and building this coast-to-coast this -coast community um, that we have been working on now um, for a couple of years. So thanks again. And without further ado, Sue, how's it going today out there in Atlanta? It's going great. Yeah, is it um, literally Atlanta? Or are you in the? Are you nearby or? Um, it's not city of Atlanta, but we are literally inside the Atlanta perimeter. And you could, if you had a good baseball arm, you could hit it with a rock um, from here. But I don't. Yeah, don't have one of those. Um, I am not a baseball coach. Um, I'm an artist and a grandmother with knees that suggest that if I'm gonna work on awareness kinds of things, I'm gonna to have to do it in a way other than um, baseball players do. Um, and I started just right about now, four years ago, um, painting for the first time in my life. I had grown up with a mom who said, Sue's the smart kid, her sister's the creative kid. I was 40 before I figured out you could be both of those things. Please don't wait that long. Um, but I, I literally started painting other than walls with rollers just about four years ago. And I discovered a method called intentional creativity. And what we're gonna to share today is one of the um, kind of the cornerstones of intentional creativity, um, which um, we refer to as prayer dots. Um, dots of hope works probably better for this group. That's fine too. In any event, we're gonna make dots. Um, and the reason that we do this, uh, it, it makes our paintings interesting, uh, but the reason that we do this is because um, if you know anything about neuro-linguistic programming, you will have heard that some people are primary visual processors, some people are primary auditory digital processors, and some people are primary kinesthetic processors, which means um, touching, moving, and emotional feeling. Um, and when we get access to more of those processing patterns at once, we're able to be more aware and more engaged and also oddly more relaxed. So um, I was born a primary auditory digital or well, primary kinesthetic, secondary auditory digital, which meant visual, nah, <laughs> not much of that going on. Uh, but when we can get all three of those happening at the same time, we're, we're literally praying, hoping, intending, um, planning for whatever we're doing all at once with virtually our whole system. So let me show you real quick what this looks like and then we're gonna talk about what we can do with it. Um, let's use hope for our word for today. And if you just sit there and you make a mark with your marker and while you're doing that, you say hope and then you see it happening. So your kinesthetic system is making the mark. Your auditory digital system is hearing you say hope inside your head. Um, and your visual system is seeing the dots um, on the paper. And what that basically means is, is you're hoping for whatever, thanks, Kari, um, three times as hard as you would be if you were just regular hoping. Like this is, this is not like, oh, I ho hope they have green beans at the farmer's market. Um, this, is, this is big hope stuff. And so you can just go on like that um, for quite some time. I'm, I'm gonna show you a painting here that I did for the example. Um, at least I think I am. Um, I painted this during the um, uh, January 6th insurrection. And I, I'm, I'm not a stereotypical flag waving person, but I needed this and then I needed the dove for peace. 
And so if you look real close, the dove is all made out of dots and every one of those was piece, 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 piece. You get the drift. Um, and then along the, the stripes on the flag, those are all dots too. And, and piece was working for me, so I just kept doing that. So this is one bigger kind of thing that you could do with the dot um, system. But today we're gonna to talk about postcards. Um, if, if you've written many postcards or letters and you're at all like me, you get writer's cramp. Um, and one of the things that I found is that if you do different things with your hands, you can keep going longer than if you just do the same thing over and over again. So and I got these postcards from Amazon because I needed some in a hurry and they were the fastest ones I could get. Um, but if I were going to start with one of these postcards, you know, I've got my list of 806 people I need to send postcards to. Um, I would start and do a bunch of them, something like this. And you see the little white box here for the address? I'm just gonna put blue dots. And yes, there is a significance to my color choice. Um, put blue dots all the way around the little white box where the person's address is gonna go. And we can make them a little wider so we get there quicker. But you wouldn't wanna do that. Um, and so then the, the place where we're going to write their name, I'm going to put Jane Doe in here. Jane is going to notice that somebody took the time to do this and personalize it for her because she matters. And Jane's, you know, husband, John, will think the same thing when he sees it. Um, another thing you can do with the front of a, a postcard like this is you can take and put dots along the big words. And so I'm doing vote right now because I'm sending postcards to people that I want them to vote. Please God go vote. Um, and you can just do like whatever comes to you like that. And each one of those is reinforcing the energy of the reason you're sending the postcard. And I know that sounds a little woo woo um, but it actually works. Um, you could get really fancy and go down here and do around the wave like that. And Scott and Kari, if you'll watch, if anybody has any questions, just holler at me. Okay. Going like this. And one of the cool things about this, I happen to have two granddaughters. They're 11 and 13. And they were here recently for spring break. And it's like, Grammy, can we help? And it, like, sure. So the girls sat around the table and put dots on the postcards and I wrote the names and the messages. So eventually the time comes that you've made the front pretty and we're gonna flip it over and, and do the, the, you know, so. So, um, so Sue, when the, when, the, yes. when, the, when the granddaughters jumped in and help you, to, uh, some, a couple of people jumped in to, the, to our meeting since we started. Okay. So just, um, so when, the, when your granddaughters are, 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 when you recruit them, how do you explain to them, um, you know, the intention behind each dot? Will you go through that again? Um, sure. Um, and, I and maybe don't... just a, another little bit about about how it about the neuro pathways that get right. developed. Okay. Now my girls are eleven and thirteen, and if we didn't get to dots pretty quick, they'd get bored. So I wouldn't necessarily tell them all this before they started, but I will tell you. Um, when we when we do dots, and I mean X's would work too, but you know they're just not quite as much fun. Um, when we do dots, we're using our visual processing path because we can see the dot, and we're using our auditory digital processing path uh, because we hear ourselves saying vote or peace or hope or whatever we happen to be hoping for at the moment, and then we also feel it kinesthetically because we're, we're, we're moving our hand and we can feel when the marker hits the paper. So that so little, that little mantra of the, of, of, of the, the, the vote, 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 and, vote and, and the physical action um, and, uh, and, and feeling that together with the, with the auditory and then also seeing it, those three yeah. senses are all merging together. And then that's doing the, how, how does that affect our left, right brain? Well, it does two things. One, it lets us be more present 
to the process and to the intention of what we're doing. And this is all about intention. Um, you guys who are writing postcards and letters aren't doing it because you're hoping people are gonna stay home on election day. Okay, we're actually trying to accomplish something here. So we're holding the intention in our mind, like focusing in a meditation, and we're getting all of our processing patterns working at once, um, which is very cool. And then the other thing we're doing, and this is interesting. Um, oh, I'm, I'm really bad at right and left. I don't know what these are gonna look like to you, but we'll do that for now. Um, you've heard people talk about right brain, left brain processing. Well, the right brain is creative work and the left brain is um, systemic stuff. So when we do dots like this and, and or especially like the, the, the flag painting, uh, there it is, um, where I was, I was creating art at the same time I was doing it, it gets our right brain talking to our left brain in a way that it doesn't always do. And we're actually building bridges between the hemispheres of our brains. Um, and it works kind of like this. If I walked out my front door and across the garden to the mailbox on the street and then walked back exactly the same way, and I did that every day, you know, for a month or two, I would have worn a path in my garden. And I would naturally keep following the path to the mailbox, even if for some reason I wanted to zig over there and look at a rose or something, you, just, you follow the path you've got made up. Well, doing this between right and left brain makes new paths. So then we literally have more neurological cooperation between wanting to create something. And um, I told somebody not long ago, I would do this if I were gonna remodel my kitchen. Let's imagine that you were. Um, and you, you, you need the, the creative part of like, what's it gonna look like? What do I want it to feel like? What's it gonna smell like when the bread is baking? All that stuff is very important. But before you go out and buy tile, you need a little systemic stuff going on. Or, or you're gonna wind up with burned bread and no walls. So this actually helps. And most of us lean one direction or the other. But this is a very painless, very effective way of encouraging the less familiar side of our brain to jump in the party, which I think is really cool. And long, many moons ago, um, I was an operating room nurse and I've actually been in there um, and, and seen what it looks like. And it looks kind of like gray jello um, mostly. Um, and, and the fact that I can sit here with you and we can make dots and we're helping our brains work better. And we're also helping the world work better. Just, it, it just blows my mind. Um, again, would I say all that to my girls? No, but when I show them how to make the dots and say the words, uh, they happen to live 30 miles west of DC. And they understand why we care about politics. Um, and so they're like, okay, we want the good guys to get elected. I don't care who you think of the good guys, just do good. Good, 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 good. And you can say the word silently, you know, if you happen to be on an airplane or something. Um, does that help? Absolutely. <clears throat> um, we're gonna take a tiny break while I get painting. So, so everyone, um, I know that right now the, um, the writing campaigns that, that we are doing are, um, you know, there, th there's not as many hundreds to, to write or thousands to write as there were you know, during the, the heart of the, of the, the campaign uh, back in the 2020 cycle. But um, um, in any case, um, yeah, we can just slow down. And this is a great opportunity for us to be able to slow down and to really um, kind of sink our teeth into um, if these, if these, if this outreach is more soulful, more authentic, more, more grassrootsy when it arrives on their doorstep, um, there's an argument that that you know less is more here that you know, we're going to have a greater conversion factor of getting people to take action, whether it's getting them to go out and vote or or write a letter or um, even if it's a senator that we're that we're reaching out to. They so anyway, I'm sorry, Sue. That, that that's okay. Um, 
this is a painting that I did. Well, it's it's going to be a painting. It's not finished yet. Um, in a live event with Scott and Kari about a week ago, and I was painting live while um, they were working on on Good Trouble. And so what I ended up painting was there you go, Congressman John Lewis from the next district over in Atlanta. And down here at the bottom, this is what's important at the moment. If you can see those, those are, those are meant to be people. Those are meant to be all the people that we want to be able to vote because of the John Lewis For the People Act that the Senate is about to act on, God willing. Um, and, and so there, and each of those people is made out of dots, out of dots of hope. So when I made them all, I was, I was saying justice because for me that encompasses voting rights. So I just did justice, 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 all those ways. And someday you'll come back and he'll be done and you can see the rest. Um, Sue, tell us what, tell us, tell them a little bit about the, the cherry blossom um, part of that, how that's going to work. Oh, fun. Good question. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that a little bit sitting down. Um, as you probably know, Washington DC is famous for the cherry blossoms in the springtime and everybody thinks they're the greatest thing that ever were. And I've never actually been there to see them. But Congressman Lewis decided the other night that he'd like cherry blossoms in his painting. And so, um, do I have paint? Of course I don't. The other way to make dots, which I actually prefer because it's more kinesthetic, um, is to do them with paint and your fingertip. So when I'm making cherry blossoms, I won't be using green, but, um, and you just do um, piece, 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 piece. And they're really fun to do. And then with the cherry blossoms, I'll do a bunch of them in kind of a dark pink and then some of them in a pink pink and then white ones on top. So they, you know, look like they really grew there. And I mean, you just wouldn't believe how much, how much intending peace or hope or whatever you can get into a painting like that when you literally become conscious of what you're doing. I just love it. Um, granddaughters, what you do with them is um, tell them, I mean, if you need to, you tell them that, you know, when Grammy gets her 14 postcards done for this day, then we can go bake cookies, you know, depending on how old they are. Um, but when they get, when they get to preteen, teen age, um, you can ask them to tell you something that they care about in the world and then explain to them, you know, let's, I mean, let's say you have a CNN watching grandchild who says they're concerned about Israel and Palestine blowing each other up, and which could happen at my house. Um, and so then you say to them, well, what's one word that you would hope for that situation? Most of them will say peace. Um, some of them will say, let's don't blow each other up. And you nudge them in the direction of one word, but that can work too, because you could actually do, let's don't blow each other up. Let's don't blow each other up. So any kind of a rhythm like that can work. And if you have very verbal people, you, you, know, you don't want to confine them um, to one word. But my girls sat and did the dots on the, the, the front of the postcards, the decorative dots while I wrote the message on the back. And they thought that was the coolest thing. And then nothing would do, but they had to go to the post office with their grandpa and mail the postcards they helped with. And my older one is about three and a half years, God help us, um, from being able to vote. And I wanna start now with her paying attention and feeling a part of, not apart from, but a part of all the things that we're trying to make work better in this country. And besides that, they're a little easier to talk to when they're 13 than they are when they're 17 or 18. Um, so you gotta use all the advantages you can get. Um, that reminds me of, um, uh, I was out with a friend um, day before yesterday and we hadn't been together for a while and, um, in any case, 
he he told me about his son who's a sophomore and 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 in college and you know and 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 mom cares deeply about politics dad does too they're both progressive um he's you know a corporate attorney um mom i i don't know mom as well but in any case son doesn't want to vote because he doesn't like either of the candidates and it's like oh my god what an epic fail you know um <laughs> to, um so um what you say there really resonates with with you know on on a deep level of, of, of getting people getting kids involved at an early age in a way that they can relate to well yeah and helping them understand that it isn't so much this person or that person as it is what this person and that person want to do and what they want your life to be like and and for teenagers who are nothing if not self-centered bless them um you know, th that's something that they start to catch on to. And one thing to remember, this just popped into my head, um, developmentally for kids, they don't even begin to think abstractly until about 12 for girls. And sorry, it's got a little older than that for boys. Um, and it doesn't get dependable until 18, 19 for girls and up to... 23, 24 for guys on average. So instead of, you know, like trying to make them read the paper, um, which probably won't work too well, if you give them something that they can do and tell them why it matters to you, uh, that's going to be the, and my, my um, older granddaughter is she adores animals and she draws and paints beautiful animals and she, and you know, wolves and bears and, and not, she's into dogs and cats too, but um, she's, she's really concerned about wild animals in the world. So I would help explain to her that as far as I can understand, this particular candidate shares that concern more than this one does. So we might want to make some dots for them. And, you know, obviously you're going to give them a choice. Um, I mean, the whole, point of all of this is about people being able to choose to vote not being told that this is what you will do so we 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 don't want to do that but let me switch markers here when it comes to the 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 big gaping back of the postcard waiting for you to write on it um i would switch to silver there and do dots all the way around the margin and this is after you've done a test postcard to make sure you can squeeze the whole message in there. Um, and the reason that I would switch to the silver is that then I'm going to pick up the blue pen and we're going to write, Dear Jane, a note. And every now and then, you know, like if you have enough space, you could actually, I hope, yeah, you can see this. As soon as I move my hand, you could actually take, this is a Sharpie micro point, the blue one. And you could actually take one of those and do teeny tiny little dots all around the first letter of her name. And again, you know, when Jane gets this out of her mailbox, she's going to think, boy, somebody was really serious about this. I might ought to, you know, see what they had to say. And then she'll go on and read about when early voting days are, wherever it is that she lives. And gee, while you're at it, it would be kind of cool if you voted for such and such candidate. Or in the case of the letters um, that envoys are writing, um, you know, we think it'd be kind of cool if you let this guy out of jail who's locked up for something you never did. Um, is that making sense? Yeah, I, I, I think it makes great sense. Um, because I, I am a firm believer, you know, and everybody has, has different beliefs in this, but just the power of, of the energy that you put out, you know, we all, our bodies, every living thing radiates energy. Um, and, and so I, I, that aspect of it, I, I really like that with the intentions and restating your attention, intentions as you're doing each of these dots, um, putting that out there in the universe, uh, that I really love that. And then also just as important is, is just that the idea of, of taking that time, even in these, these small minutes, you know, this, what you're showing us is not taking very long to be present and to be focused on the task at hand. I am so terrible at multitasking and trying to do 10 different things at one time. And 
and for a while it seems to work. And then there's that moment where you just crash because your body and your soul and your heart's like, I can't do these many yeah. things at once. And, and so that's, that's another thing that really, um, that's you know, why I love the, the decorating, if you will, of the cards. And what, what I normally do is, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to do 10 cards now, you know, mm -hmm. today, tomorrow, wh whatever. And so I'll decorate all 10 of them first. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back and, and write the message. Because what, what I found is that if I try to write the message, you know, clearly and carefully, while I'm still in dot making mode, occasionally they don't turn out to be quite as le legible. Gotcha. Um, okay. This yeah. is a fun thing that my, my teacher, um, Shiloh Sophia McLeod, um, has helped me understand and trust me when I tell you I am not a physics student. But Einstein's theory of relativity is E equals MC squared, um, which is energy equals mass times, I don't know, um, squared. But what Shiloh says is that when we're doing the dots, we're living on the equal sign between the energy of what we're putting into it and what we want to happen because of it. Now, like I said, I'm not much for physics, but I think kind of living on the equal sign is, is sort of attractive. Um, and, you know, if, I mean, I make dots all the time, but if I can make dots and help make the world better for those same two granddaughters that are growing up in it, uh, that that really encourages me. And, you know, everybody, each one of you has got a why for why you're here and why you're doing this. Um, and part of what the, the dots do is they help us to get conscious of our why. We don't sit down and do this because, you know, we had pretty penmanship in the third grade and they said, you know, you should write as much as you can. We don't care. We care about what's happening in the world. I care about the world my girls are growing up in and everybody else's too. But it's mine that makes me pick up the marker and do this for however many, you know, elections. And one of the things about living in Georgia is we haven't recovered from the last one yet. We're already deep into the next one. Um, and, and so it takes, um, you know, it, it, it takes a glance at, at you know, the picture or the remembrance of, you know, someone who was killed in a riot, God forbid. Um, it takes the connection to the real world and the connection to all of our parts of being to do this kind of stuff. And if, for me, if you try to do it without being whole person, you're going to wind up um, tired and annoyed. Sue, did you was it was it you that was um, that made the analogy of the the airplane and putting the mascot and the self care element of this and and how that works? Well, it 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 wasn't me. Somebody else thought that up, um, but it's very true. Uh, the the flight attendants will tell you, you know, if your mask falls down, you know, help uh, put your own on first, and then help the people around you. Um, which is totally true because if you've, you know, turned blue and fallen out of your seat, you can't help anybody else. And in this case, if we take care of ourselves while we're involved in a process like this, while we're writing letters or, or you know, marching in a parade or whatever the heck it is we're doing, um, marching in a protest, if we're taking care of ourselves, we have more that we can then give to what we care about. Completely agree. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it's, it's such a simple um, thing. And when you say it, it makes complete sense. It's very logical. And for whatever reason, for a lot of us, um, you know, trying to, to make the better, the world a better place, it's very hard to do. <laughs> well, it is it's hard to do. Um, and, and I'm beginning to suspect that it's hard to do because people thought it ought to be hard to do. Um, <laughs> some other people. Yeah, um, right. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, and that's kind of what, you know, we're trying to do here um, with Envoys for Humanity is to, to show that there, there can be some joy, you know, finding these simple ways to, to create joy in this process. 
um, mainly just so we can keep doing it and being more effective, um, you know, so yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, and another, another one of the traditions that I've learned from my intentional creativity friends is um, an, an ancient legend that's common in many, many parts of the world called the legend of the red thread. This is in fact, a ball of red yarn. And I have a red thread around my wrist, at least one at all times. And the point of the legend is that, um, and it's, it's an indigenous legend um, everywhere from the East through the Middle East into um, South and Central America, up into Native Americas. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's universal is a big word, but we're going with that at least, you know, um, in quotes. Um, and part of the legend is that long before we are born, we are connected by the red thread to all the people who will be important in our lives. Now, I don't know if that's literally true, but philosophically, I think it's a pretty good deal. And, you know, part of that means that, you know, we're all connected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the, the, the best part of the red thread legend for me, I like the connection thing a lot, but the other part that I love is that each one of us is holding our piece of the red thread and somebody else is holding the rest of it because we can only hold ours. So if you think about how many of us have we got here? 11 of us today? Um, if you think about the 11 of us standing in a circle holding the red thread, each one of us has our piece to hold and we're gonna let other people hold their pieces. And for me, that's another um, self-care thing for activists. I can't answer every email that comes in my email box. You know, give me $5 and, and you know, oh my God, the crisis, you know, I, I can't do it. I can do what I can do if I don't feel guilty about somebody else holding the other pieces of the red thread. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's part of what I hope for in helping people find ways that they can do what they can do. Um, and, and just, you know, it's somebody else's red thread to do some of the things that show up in your email. Yeah, I like that. That's great. Yeah, yeah that's um, th those, those um, recurring motifs um, that we find like the red thread legend that, that recur around the world um, in different cultures are um, extremely fascinating to me. And I think for those who have, have um, looked at um, Joseph Campbell's work and, and, and uh, the, if, you, if you haven't check out the, uh, on YouTube, there's, you can find uh, the, the um, power of, the power of myth, I believe, is that what is that what it's called? The power I of think myth? so. Power of myth. He's great. Yeah, and 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 you know, people have put a, a lot of study into why that is, and in any case, um, that's very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, thank you, Scott. And that one that made me just think of one more of my favorites, and I'll I'll share this real quick, and then I'll be quiet. Um, you may have heard of Dr. Clarissa Bincola Estes. Um, who's a right? She her first book was Women Who Run with the Wolves, which made quite a ruckus back, you know, decades ago. Um, and she is known as the dangerous old woman in her writing. She's a Jungian analyst, and she has a quote that I absolutely love, and it goes like this: "Welcome to the fireside of the dangerous old woman, tribe of the sacred heart." still standing, still dancing. And somewhere in there between welcome to the fireside and whatever, I should have put um, many of us scar clam. So welcome to the fireside of the dangerous old woman. Many of us scar clam. Still standing, still dancing. And maybe it's just me but that's what I'm doing when I do this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's and, and I, and I would, and you're right. And, and 
Um, if you if you're going out for a walk, get for some of you that didn't catch my little uh, rap at the very beginning about being a coach and helping people uh, approach their optimum performance um, in sports. Um, um, and it doesn't have to, you know, uh, getting into that zone can be something that we get into um, just um, by taking a walk or, or if you're not a meditator, if you don't sit and meditate, but maybe, you know, a lot of us have had inspiring um, clarity while taking a shower, for example. Uh, I, I know we all probably have on, on, on the shower thing and, you know, it, it hits you in there. And part of the thing there is that um, the and the shower, you know, you're, you're having this warm water come on you. It's, it's very, yeah, you're getting all of these, this sensory input and it has a, a, a way of bringing you into that moment. Uh, it, it, whether you, you know, I mean, um, without trying to, because that, yeah. that the feeling is so, it's so good to have that warm water coming on you. Um, well, and, and, and the lights are on um, neurologically in a way that they often are not. Right. So when we take a, if we, if when we walk mindfully and we're thinking, we're, we're, we're literally feeling heel toe, heel toe, we're in, in our focus, even for five or 10 seconds um, at a time, you know, we're going to get distracted and, 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 and get off of that focus. And, and that's okay too. And then we start to notice, oh, I got distracted. And so now not only are you observing your senses in real time and using that as a, as a method to get back to the present, but you also start to become aware of the distractions and, and how that's okay. And there, there's a distraction. Oh, I got distracted because of this, you know? And so you start to objectively look at your own thought pattern and why we get distracted. So that's just another key part of, of this meditative um, kind of uh, practice is, is not just um, uh, coming back to our senses, but also our, our mind and, and why it does what it does. So we see it a little bit more outside of ourselves rather than getting so lost in it. And this kind of self-awareness that we're talking about here Lee is, is the building block for being more empathetic and thinking about how other people might be feeling. So yes. there is a very, um, there's a lot of evidence that, that, that leads us to think that if, if we're imparting this kind of self-awareness increasingly to people as, a, as in education, as, as youngsters um, or on up through the, even the business world or what have you in corporate settings, um, that we can produce more empathetic people by cultivating our own self-awareness. Self-awareness equals the capacity to be more aware of others. It, it totally does. And, and a, a, a really good dot mantra, if you will, came to me while you were talking, Scott. What if we did heal the world? Heal the or heal our world. Heal, heal our world. Can't necessarily say it out loud. Heal our world while we were decorating our postcards. And I might even say, being an envoy for humanity, I might even say heal humanity, just being a sucker for alliteration. Hey, works for me. I'm, I've been known <laughs> to be a sucker for alliteration too. Yep. So hopefully that's given y'all some some good ideas about things that can not only make the time that you would spend postcarding uh, more effective, more energetically present in the world, but also um, to help you hang in there um, for, for more of the good work that you're doing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sue. That, that is just really wonderful. And I think this is something that we can continue to explore, um, you know, and we and and thank everybody for 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 coming and and you know coming on this little journey with us today. And um, um, I hope that that it kind of uh, lights a fire in us to to um, to take this to the next level. Um, because as I said, and as Kari said, this is this is really um, right in the sweet spot of 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 kind of what we hoped for when we when we first started Envoys, but we just got so caught up in, in, in so many of the other kind of, um, you know, how many can we get done and what's our next project and just so hectic in the, in the, um, in the campaign season that, um, well, and then plus we didn't meet Sue until just recently. <laughs> and so, so we're, we're just so grateful to-, oh, meant to, to be. <laughs> yes. 
What do you think, Kari? Um, I love it. So I'll share. Um, so this is our first one that we've ever done together. I'm very excited. Um, maybe we can even play around with events where we we play a little bit of music or something and, and do some postcards. So while Sue was talking, I did my first one. Um, so I did I did dots around the the postcard on on the around the corners, um, making a border. And, and my mantra for this because this is for um, many in the filibuster and, and getting rid of that so we can pass all this really important legislation that the majority of the country wants is get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done, yes. get it done. Um, and so I did that. And then um, I was writing a thank you note to my Senator Feinstein because she did finally come out um, about at least amending the filibuster. She wasn't initially, I'd sent emails and she said, you know, I believe we work together, blah, blah, blah. And then finally she did come out. So it was a big deal that she, she did that. So I sent her um, a postcard saying, thank you. I have terrible handwriting, but so um, like you said, I, I did the dots around her address. And then um, I highlighted with dots, um, thank you for the People Act and, and um, ma the majority that we have the majority in Congress to kind of kind of press that of we we have the majority right now and we have to start acting like it um and so that was kind of my my very first dot postcard so so it'd be kind of fun to to you know do some like have a little bit of time to, to do some this was so much great information of all the theory behind it and, and the reasoning behind it and the importance of it and then maybe we'll be able to set aside some time if we these events where we can kind of do some together and and love have that to. group feeling, you know, the energy of, of working together. So I'm I love to. So I love right it. That, I love it that you did um, that. That's a um, a thank you card, you know, and that little story about how she made the move. You know, she was she was one of the ones, you know, that was not not down and and increasingly. It just goes to show you that you know we can get there and and and, and right. we will get there. Um, and then furthermore, just the way you're not always asking for something, but also you're saying thank you, you know, yes. and I think just putting that energy out there like that, that's part of this whole matrix of, 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 of you know, affecting the change is not just asking for stuff, but saying thank you and, and just that kind totally. of attention. Because yeah. I mean, we all know that a, a big um, a portion of a, of a candidate is um, trying to get reelected, right? Trying to stay in, in that position of leadership so they can create the change. And so it's, it is so important as, as our constituents, especially on the times that, that we agree to let them know that we, we do have your back. You can stick your, your neck out. You can um, represent your constituents like you should because we notice and we will show up at the polls um, and, and we will keep you in office for doing those things and speaking out when maybe it's not so popular um, and, and really giving that support because that's going to embolden them more to do the right thing when maybe it's, you know, when they're up in Washington and they're away from where they are to maybe blend in more and kind of just go with what's ever happening, you know, in yeah. Congress at that moment and not really what's happening on the ground. So, so it is, it is really important to, to do both and, and it just feels good to thank people, right? Instead of well, always, you got to do this, you're not doing this, yeah. I'm holding your feet to the fire about this. It just, you know, again, for the energy, so the sustainability of the work and, and your, um, you know, your just mental sanity um, to put positivity out there. Well, yes. And, and um, Allie put up a message that said she got three postcards done while we were here today. Ooh, and for hey, anybody Allie. else who was making postcards, that's wonderful. Um, and, you know, it, oh, excellent. Yes. Very cool. Perfect. Perfect. You. Thank you, Very Allie. cool. Um, and, you know, we're going to put something out in the world because that's just what people do. Um, and, and working like this and working together, we have a chance to put good energy into the world instead of the other kind. And it's needed. <laughs> yes. And, yeah, yeah, and that gets me out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Definitely. Um, or as Congressman Lewis would say, if he were here, it's time to make good trouble. Right. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I love it. Thank you um, all.
Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Sue. I am just excited to see where we can um, take this partnership further. Um, what a wonderful way to, to spend Sunday, um, you know, th just talk, thinking about in intentionality, creativity, positivity, making changes. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, um, whether you're joining us here on Zoom um, or you're joining us on our live streams. We're kind of live streaming everywhere. We, For the first time ever, we're live streaming on Twitter um, at the same time of Facebook and, and YouTube. So that's pretty, pretty exciting um, just to get the word out there. So again, um, you can go to our website, envoysforhumanity.org slash postcarding. Um, that's going to give you our um, two writing campaigns that we are working on right now. We're always continually um, looking for new ones. And as elections get closer, we'll be writing more to voters and things like that. But, um, but we are right now, our focus is on passing the For the People Act because it's a must pass. Um, so not only writing your senators, but also calling them. Um, we are writing to senators that are not necessarily might not be your senator either, because right. here's this physical card saying, we want this, this affects all of us. Um, you need to do your duty and get it done. Um, so we feel it's important to even reach out to, to other senators, but make sure 100% you are calling, you're writing, you're um, emailing your own senators to let them know how important this is. We can't um, give up. We can't feel like, oh, it's maybe going to happen or something. We have to be constantly on this to make sure that this happens. And um, so on voiceforhumanity.org slash postcarding and check out our other events. You can also, there's a link to our events page to see other events that, that we're going to be putting on and that we're partnering with other organizations. Um, specifically, we have a couple coming up with the Women of Color Coalition and they're going to be doing, I think on the 20th, I'm kind of excited, um, a conversation about gun violence um, with um, Moms Demand Action, a chapter. And so, so that would be a great one. Um, so make sure that you that you um, check us out, um, follow us on social media. Thank you again for joining us and taking Kari, on your catch Kim's comment real quick. Um, I know we need we need to figure that out. We Scott and I are trying to come up with with an idea um, of how to get um, West Virginians um, to to write to their senators, and so so we are trying to to. Um, to figure out a way because definitely um, Joe Manchin, which he's kind of a, a politician's politician. So if, if, if Joe Biden can be the, the great olive branch that extender that he can, I think we can get Joe Manchin if they can sweeten the pot that will, it will enrich, help his state, which the center should be doing that, right? They're, they're representative of their state. Um, I don't know about cinema because we don't know where her head's at. So, so no. she's she's a really important one, um, you know, to to figure out yeah. what's going to get her to the table. Joe Manchin, I think, if if we can figure out what West Virginians really want and need, and kind right. of tweak getting that in there, I'm all for that. Um, well, and Kim, as it happens, I know somebody in West Virginia, and she's an artist. And um, she probably knows more people in West Virginia and we might be able to get a postcard party going. That would be great. And, yeah. and all of you probably know somebody in somewhere that would think this was cool. Yeah. And, and what, one more tiny hint, if you're emailing um, senators or who, candidates, whatever, you can put a little line of, of period dots like after your name or yes, whatever, right? and we'll yes, know what we're doing. Too, even so if they don't. Of it. Well, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, definitely, um, like I said, keep keep um, keep an eye out for for other events that are coming down. We'll be posting it on all, all of our socials, um, and it's at the Envoy Way um, is all of our social media. So, so thank you for joining. Enjoy your Sunday, and um, we'll see you next time. Thank Thanks you. all. Bye Thank everyone. you. Bye-bye.